Today, I wanna to show you why I always reach for Zod whenever I'm working with React Server Component Server Actions. And to show you what I mean, I've got this edit blog post form right here. This is a form that loads a blog post out of the database and lets us edit it. And this whole page right here is driven by a React Server Component. And today, we're gonna to wire up this page to use a server action. Now, the way that server actions work is we have one right here. Server action is just a function that uses this use server directive. And the way you use it is you pass it into a form. So if we come down here to our edit blog post form, we can see that we have this action property and we're passing in the save post function. And this means whenever this form is submitted, the save post function is gonna be called with all the form data. So let me show you what that looks like. We'll come back up to our server action and we are gonna console.log form data. And this form data argument holds all the data from the inputs in our form. React is gonna hand this off to our server actions whenever the form is submitted. So if we come over here and we submit this form, we can see that our form data gets logged to the console. So we can see name equals title, value this is a test post. We can see uh, the text area that holds the content of the post down here. And we also have this name ID, value one. This is the ID of our blog post. This comes from a hidden input in our form. This is just to let us know which blog post we're editing here. Now today, we wanna to get these edits from this form back into our database. And right now we're working with this form data class. Uh, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna get the data out of form data and into a plain old JavaScript object. So we are going to make a new variable, uh, we'll call it form, and we are gonna use this line right here. We're gonna use object.fromentries to convert our form into a JavaScript object. So if we console.log form and take a look at this when we submit our form, we can see that our form is represented as a plain old JavaScript object. So we have property ID value one. So this type of data structure is gonna be a lot easier for us to work with. Okay, now let's get this data back into the database. In this application, we happen to be using Prisma. So we can call await prisma.post.update. And the way that Prisma update post works is it takes two options. The first is gonna be a where, and this tells us which post we wanna update. Well, we wanna update the post with ID one. So we'll use form.id. And then the next option to update is gonna be the data we wanna update. And here, we are just gonna start by updating the title. So we'll update title to be form.title. Okay, so right away we get some TypeScript errors. And if we mouse over this ID, we get this error that says type string is not assignable to type number. And this is because the ID in our form gets represented as a string. The ID comes from a hidden input. When we submit this form, all those fields are gonna get serialized as strings and sent to the server. So right now, form.id is a string, but Prisma expects a number, and this is TypeScript warning us that this is gonna cause issues for Prisma. In fact, if we try to save this page, we're gonna get this Prisma error that says uh, argument ID got invalid value of string one, on Prisma update post. Okay, so we can fix this by turning our string into an integer and we will use parseInt to do that. So now if we save, uh, we get this new TypeScript error and this error says, argument of type form data entry value is not assignable to parameter of type string, type file is not assignable to type string. And this is a little strange, we're getting an error about a file type, uh, but there is a good reason for this and that is that form fields can be represented as two different types. So you have your regular form inputs, your hidden inputs, your text inputs, your text areas, those get represented as strings. But you also have another type of form input, the file input, and when that gets submitted as form data, that gets represented as a file type. And so this is TypeScript warning us. TypeScript is saying, hey, you know that uh, form.id field? Well, that could be a file input. And if it is a file input, you're passing it to parseInt, and that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so we can get around this error by doing a type of check. So we can say if type of form.id is equal to a string, then we'll parseInt it. Otherwise, we'll just treat it as undefined. And now this makes that TypeScript error go away. 
Now we've got one more TypeScript error, and that is on this title property. And this is that same type of error. TypeScript is warning us that form.title could be a file input. So we will do the same type of fix. We will just use a type of check to make sure we're working with a string before we pass this data to Prisma. Okay, this looks good. Let's see if we can actually use this server action to update a blog post. So we'll just come over to the title. Let's add some twos and then submit it. Okay, that's great. It looked like everything worked. Let's go over to our database and let's just refresh our database with Prisma Studio. And there we go, we see all the twos. So it looks like Prisma was able to update our database. Pretty cool. Now there's only one problem with this code right here. And that is, this is really difficult to read. We have these ternaries, we have these type of checks, we have these undefines. And you know, right now we're only dealing with two fields. We're only dealing with ID and title. We still have to deal with content and this publish checkbox down here. And so this code is just gonna expand in size, expand in boilerplate. And again, it's really hard to read. I, I don't like opening up files that look like this. It takes me a minute to have to grok them. There's just way too much going on here. So this is where Zod comes in. Zod is gonna allow us to take our form data and transform it into the exact types that Prisma needs in order to update the database. So let me show you how Zod works. The first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna comment out all our gnarly Prisma code. And we are gonna create a new variable called edit post schema. And this edit post schema is going to represent the values that we wanna get out of our form when it's submitted to our server action. And so the first thing we want is we want an object that represents our post. So we're gonna use Zod. And the way we do that is we import this Z from Zod. And then we're gonna say we want an object that represents a post. Now, what should this object have? Well, we know we need an ID, and so we're gonna say our ID is a string, and we're gonna use a string because we know that our ID gets sent over as a string from our form. And then also, we know we need a title. So we'll say we have a title, and that has a string. And for both of these, we're gonna use z.string. This is a command from Zod that says these two fields need to be strings. Now that we have our post schema, we can get the data using the schema. So we'll say data is edit post schema dot parse. And here we're gonna pass in our form. And then finally, we will console log the data that we get back from Zod. Okay, let's see what this looks like. We are gonna submit our form again. And here you go, this is the data that Zod returned. And you see that we get an ID that's string one and a title that is a title from our form. And the really cool thing about this is if we mouse over this data property, we can see that we have ID as a string and title as a string. So we know we have the right types. There's no need to do any sort of type of checks, which means we can come back to our Prisma query. And here we can just say ID is equal to parseint data.id. No need for a type of check, pretty cool. And same with title. We can say title is equal to data.title. So right away, we can see how Zod is cleaning up our code. Let's go ahead, let's change the title again. Okay, looks like it worked. Come back to Prisma Studio. And there we go, look, we see the threes. And so here we can see that we're able to use this data returned by Zod right inside our Prisma call. Now, one thing I'd love to clean up here is this call to Parsint. When I open this file and I see this parsint, it's not really clear to me why this is a parsint. I have to think back, oh yeah, it's because that the form input is represented as a string and we have to convert that to an integer. But this right now is just noise. Uh, we know our form has an ID. It'd be awesome if Zod could give us back the integer representation of that ID. And it turns out we can do that with a command from Zod called coerce. So we can say ID is equal to Z, dot coerce number. And this is gonna tell Zod that Zod should force the ID from our form to be a number. And you can see here, we're getting this error from TypeScript. It said argument of type number is not assignable to type string. We don't need to parse in a number, so we can just get rid of this whole call. Okay, now if we submit our form, 
Look at that. We can see the ID is represented as a number one, so no more need for a parsint. Very cool. Okay, now let's get the rest of our form wired into our Zod schema. So we have this content text area, that's gonna be a string. And then we have this published checkbox, and we want that represented as a Boolean. Okay, let's see what happens when we submit our form. We get this error from Zod, and it says a path published, uh, it expected a Boolean, but it received undefined. And if we go up to where we log our form data, you can see that there is no publish property here. But we told Zod that our form would have a publish property that's a Boolean. And this is what happens when there's a mismatch between our schema and the object, like our form that we're trying to parse. Zod is going to throw an error that we have to deal with. Now, in this case, there's, there's no publish checkbox. And this is because this is how checkboxes in HTML work. If a checkbox is not checked, it doesn't get submitted with the form data. It's completely left out. In fact, it only gets sent to the server when it's checked. And so we can tell Zod that uh, the Boolean might be undefined, but we always want published represented as a Boolean. So we can again use coerce to say it might be undefined. If it is undefined, treat it as false otherwise treat it as true. And now if we uncheck our checkbox and submit our form, we can see down here, published is not included in our form submission, but when Zod parses the data, it is gonna treat published as false, pretty cool. And if we happen to check the checkbox and submit it, we can see that published is included in the form data and Zod treats it as a true Boolean. And so here we can really see how Zod is making it so easy to work with form data. Okay, let's go ahead and use Prisma to update the rest of our fields. So we will say content is data.content and published is data.published. Okay, let's try to make some edits. We'll add some fours, change this to be 444 and we will treat the post as published. All right, and we will check in Prisma Studio. So we'll reload this, and there we go. We see our fours, and we see the post is published. So this is pretty awesome. Okay, before we go, let's just clean up this code a little. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of all these console logs. And then next, we are gonna simplify the data that we get back from our edit post schema. So we're gonna use object destructuring here, and we're gonna ask our post schema back for two different things, the ID as well as the data that we wanna update. And then now uh, we can just use the ID field in where, and then for data, we can get rid of this whole object here and just use the data that's returned from Zod. And if we mouse over this, we can see that data is just the fields we want to update, title, content, and published, and ID is going to be the post ID that we want to update. Okay, one more time. Uh, let's change this to fives. Let's unpublish it. Okay, looks good. And the real test, there we go. We see all the data in our database got updated correctly. And so this right here is why I love working with Zod so much, especially when working with form data and server actions. I would say that most of the server actions I write end up taking on this shape. I take in form data, I write a Zod schema, I parse that form data with the Zod schema, and then I take that the data that I know is in the shape that I want and hand that right off to Prisma. And I think this code is just so simple. There's no if statements, there's no ternaries, there's no type of checks. And one of the best parts of using Zod is that we know that if our post schema parse ever fails, Zod is gonna blow up, it's gonna throw an error. And so we're guaranteed to have the type safety of our schema for everything below our parse call, which is just awesome because look how simple this Prisma update statement looks. So again, this is why I always reach for Zod whenever I am writing a server action. Now, if you're new to server components or you've never used them before, I have a whole course on Build UI that's about data fetching with server components. In the course, we build out this user table, 
we go over data fetching, Prisma, pagination, client components, transitions, loading templates. It's a great introduction to server components. So I strongly recommend you check that out if you want to learn more about these server components. I'll have a link to that in the description below, but I hope you enjoyed this video on Zod and I'll see you in the next one.